What's up, everybody? I'm Amra. This is Amra's Logic. Got a new video for you today. We got Milwaukee Bucks trades, rumors, and news live edition. We just here to talk about Boonhoser and what we think is next. We're not diving into Middleton, nothing else. All we're doing today is talking about Mike Boonhoser and what's next. I'm in my new room. It's just not set up. It's all bland. I just got the walls done and my little space and everything, but I'm going to add all the razzle-dazzle behind me in a little bit. But I'm in my new I'm in my new office. Finally, this day has come. So uh, glad to. Uh, it's been a few days, y'all. We haven't chopped it up in a few days, and a lot has transpired since the Bucks lost. We found out a Mike Budenholzer lost his brother in Game Three or Game either Game Three or Game Four in a car accident, which was unfortunate. So I think that's why the Milwaukee Bucks are currently treading carefully. Uh, with the Mike Boonehoser situation, seeing uh, that it's a very sensitive situation. And again, it's unfortunate what happened to Bud, but we got to deal with what happened prior to that unfortunate incident. We we have to be real. We have to be honest. And we do. We all have hearts. We've all lost loved ones, but we've all had to deal with different consequences during, the, during these times. Different things happen in your life. And that, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get a pass for certain things, but you have to look at things that happened prior to that uh, unfortunate event and the patterns that have happened during that event. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just got to take all of that in consideration. I'm about to get in the chat in a minute. Shout out to the chat. Shout out to Bucks Nation. I know this has been difficult, and, and I, I still can't believe we not in the playoffs no more. I haven't really even been chopping it up like that. I took a few days off of YouTube. We're going to still talk about this Bucks stuff. But I'm going to start to expand a little bit since we got put out so early, unfortunately, and to start to talk and watch and we'll chop it up about key matchups in uh, both conferences like the uh, Celtics and Sixers and the Lakers and Golden State. Let me know if y'all cool with that. Then we'll chop it up. We Obviously, we love the Bucks, but we love basketball as well. So let's chop it up about the, the main the, the main uh, the main teams that are facing off in the East and West. So. In our conference, the the the, be the best uh, series is Celtic Sixers and uh, Lakers Golden State. So we'll chop that up too, y'all. Make sure to hit the like button when y'all get in here. I'm gonna get in the chat in a minute. I, I I'm still feeling a way about our loss, y'all. I, I still I'm okay. I get it, but it's 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 hard even seeing like Miami advance, play the Knicks, and win the first game. It's crazy. It's crazy. This has just been very rough and ups and downs, and then. The Mike Boonhoser's information you find out, like a lot of this is real wild, y'all. A lot of this is real wild. But before I continue to rant, this is this is a Bucks Nation. We have an event in session. So the first thing we need to do is respect the chat and let's see who in the chat and shout out the chat and some of the questions that y'all said in here. Pastor Mendo said this is going to be tough since that terrible news came out. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it makes things interesting. But you have to take everything in consideration, though. I, I feel what you're saying, Pastor Mendo. I feel what you're saying, though. Jimmy Roller said, been waiting for this, man. Yeah, I had to take a couple of days to get myself together. I didn't want to just come on a, on a mic just yelling and screaming. I wanted to be kind of calm and kind of be able to put things in perspective when I'm top chopping it up with Bucks Nation. Shout out to Jimmy Roller. My boy Max in the chat. Max said the last few days have been the weirdest uh, ever. Yeah, absolutely. Been very strange, man, with that information. And then, uh, you know, Giannis post-game comment. It's just a lot going on with the Bucks right now. And then I'm hearing Horse and uh, Bud are real close friends. So that lets me that makes me think that might make things more difficult to get rid of Bud since he has an actual Horse has a personal relationship with Bud. Is that going to impact his all-around decision-making for what's best for the team? These are things to consider, y'all. It's not just about what we think as the fans or even what other other staff members think. If the GM and the coach are cool, it's going to be hard to sever that bond. We got to take that in consideration. Max said, what up, famo? What up, what up? My boy Daniel Orton, what's good? Only seven players are under contract. Yes, they are. Hey, we need to do like, you know what? Before, we just need to do a mass overhaul too. We need to do a mass overhaul. And I think that the players we get is dependent if we keep Bud or not. That is the biggest. We can't even get players yet until we know if we're going to keep Bud or not. 
because depending if we keep Bud, you have to adjust the type of players you need to get. We're going to need to get much more athletic, younger players that are more cerebral if we're going to have Bud as a coach because Bud, respectfully, I know he's been through a lot, but he's not the most cerebral coach. He doesn't make adjustments. So we would have to have certain players that already have high basketball IQ that can kind of figure it out on their own without coaching. So that's going to be key. I don't even think we can... Let me ask y'all this. Do you all think we can even pick up any players yet until we figure out if Bud is going to be the coach? Because I think that's a huge difference. If we have Bud or if we had Ty Lue, the type of players that we should get is going to be completely different to their systems. So I don't even think that we like we can assume what players we should get until we know Bud is going to be the coach or not. I think that's key. My boy Humility I said, what up, Amber from Puerto Rico? You know, let's fire Bud. It... It's trending that way, bro. It's trending that way. It's trending that way that we need to fire, but maybe not right away because this is a sensitive situation. Y'all know what I'm saying? So maybe after the playoffs, I think would be the most appropriate time to fire Bud, but I don't think that there's an avenue for Bud not to be fired. Too much has transpired over his tenure and early uh, playoff flameouts. We've had great regular seasons where enough is enough at a certain point and you have to take in consideration that we have a, a transcendent athlete on our team and Giannis, a multiple-time MVP. Not many teams get the opportunity to have a player that gifted. You don't want to waste those opportunities in those prime years uh, with a coach that can't get you over the hump. And then I'll hear people in the chat say, well, Bud won a chip. Did Bud win the championship or did Giannis go absolutely berserk and, and win the championship? We got to be honest, too, when we're talking about stuff. I know people want to say glass half full, half empty, but I'm telling you it's a lot easier to win with Giannis than without Giannis. We all agree with that. And if we look at that playoff run, Giannis had an outrageous playoff run, y'all, when we won that championship. That had a lot more to do with Giannis than it did, bud, respectfully. Again, I'm not trying to kick this man when he's down. All I'm doing is telling the truth of what happened, y'all. This is not disrespect. I'm just telling the truth, and that's it. If I'm lying, y'all say something in the chat. Do we want to say, if we had to say percentages for we won that championship, I would say 70% would go to Giannis and the players, and 30 to maybe even 20% will go to, uh, I would say 20% go to Bud and 10% go to Bucks fans because I'm telling y'all, in that playoff run, the, the fans motivated that team more than the coaching staff did. The fans put them over the top. When Pfizer form is rocking like that, they can't lose. Like, they won't lose. They won't lose. I just don't feel like a a huge, that Bud had a huge impact on us winning that championship. That's all I'm saying. Bud is a great coach. If you're looking for, like, a team that hasn't been winning, they're having, like, a Detroit Pistons, that's when you need a Bud to get you to the playoffs and kind of make you a contender but once you're a contender bud is not the correct coach for your team if you're trying to win championships or be constantly in the finals bud is not that coach again that's no disrespect he's a great coach for getting you to like the tournament he'll get you in the playoffs but you need a different level to start winning championships and i don't believe bud is that guy like i said you put him on detroit or any of these bottom feeder teams, he's going to make them a, a much better team. That's a, a fact without a shadow of a doubt. They're going to be a better of a t better team. But if they're already a playoff team and you're asking Bud to get them to the next level, he's not capable. He's not capable, y'all. I, I really think the best time to, to kind of move on from Bud will be after the NBA playoffs, let things die down, let him handle the situation, and then uh, I think we should move on. Or do you guys think, considering the situation, we give him one more year? Y'all let me know in the comment section. Let me keep going through the chat. Cologne, was good? Now Drew is going to retire soon, but I'm not blaming Bud for, uh, that his brother died. Facts. Shout out to Cologne. Good to see you in the chat, bro. The man named Giannis Antetokounmpo said, let's get Dame. That would be a game changer. But y'all say who get Dame. Who do we all give up for Dame? Because y'all know Dame make $200 million. Right, so how do, who do, who do we give up to get Dame besides Middleton? Because Middleton ain't gonna be enough. Y'all let me know in the chat. <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> he will not say, bro, do the live every day. If I can find something to talk about it, I will, bro. And, and work's not too crazy. I'll start going live. We'll just we'll just chop it up about the NBA playoffs in general. My boy, Kenny Mack, let me see what you want. Kenny Mack, that's crazy. His brother died. He didn't even know because he was coaching the Bucks game. Yeah, that's crazy. It's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. It's definitely unfortunate, Kenny Mack. That's why I'm, I, we talking about it. Like, do you give Bud one more chance? Do you give him a leniency? Or it, it just is what it is and you cut ties, but you cut ties at an appropriate time. I really think if we're going to cut ties, it needs to be at an appropriate time. I think now is too soon. I do think after the playoffs conclude in the June area that that would be best for everyone. Things have calmed down. We, we're like everybody's in a better state of mind. And I think it would be easier for Bud to handle if it happened after the NBA playoff. The monkey wrench in this thing that we all got to consider. Like I know probably about 90% of the chat want Bud fire, but you can't fire Bud if his best friend is the GM. Like that, that's gonna make things extremely difficult. We do need to take this in consideration, y'all. Nabel, what up, yo? We back. You looking good? Hey, man, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to do my thing, bro. I'm improving my area. It's gonna be not bland like this. Contractors just finished my room, bro. So uh, I just kind of moved in, uh, testing out the live and like. Uh, lights and all that you know what i'm saying how the, how the youtubers do it with the little lights in the background and all that so i'm testing all that out and uh trying to get that situated you know we going green we bucks nation all over here green you know packers bucks you know how it is that's how we do but let me get back in the chat here shout out the navel sanju taze i don't think bud uh, uh will go because his brother uh, is dead sadly that's the thing we don't know, Sanju Taze, if this if the, the brother situation is gonna affect management and and leadership and what they want to do next. Lee Bruce said he didn't seem too upset though. You 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 know some people have a good poker face, bro. Some people have a real good poker face. My boy Dark Kent condolences to Bud, but he has to go as a coach. Point blank. Period. We, we, we want to get to the next level consistently. Let's just think about our regression, right? So last year we lost in the second round, right? And we didn't have Middleton. That was the excuse, right? Now, I'm just stating facts, y'all. I'm not trying to sway anybody one way or the other. I'm just telling what actually happened. The Bucks last year lost in the second round in Game 7 to the Celtics. Chris Middleton was hurt. We got a pass. Okay, that's why we lost. Though, let's be real, that series was very winnable, but we choked that series. We should have beat the Celtics last year. We choked that. Let's be real. And that had something to do with coaching, but I digress. People just said, oh, we had Middleton. We didn't have Middleton. That's why we lost. That's not really why we lost, y'all. We said that to make ourselves feel better. We played terrible. Drew had terrible games. We shot terrible. Defense was terrible. We gave that series away more than the Celtics won it. Let's be clear. This year, we have Middleton. Giannis misses a few games, and we get put out in the first round. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called regression. You can say what you want, but that's regression. If you were went to the second level, we've been regressing. So we win a championship, get put out the second round, now we get put out the first round. What's next? Not making a playoff? I mean, we got to be real, y'all. Like, It's unfortunate, but it's time for change if we're expecting to get to that next level. You need to have the coach that's going to get you to the next level. Respectfully, Golden State saw it. They had Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson was a, is a great coach. He got them to a certain level, and they, they realized that was his peak. They got him out of there and got in Steve Kerr. Once, the, once Golden State got Steve Kerr, they haven't looked back, have they? They have a legit dynasty. They just destroyed the Sacramento Kings in Game 7 on the, on Sac on the road. They have a coach. They have the mentality. Sometimes you have to do that. And it's not like the Golden State wasn't making a playoffs with Mark Jackson. They just thought they could do better. And I think the Bucks can do better. No disrespect to, to Bud. I, I understand my condolences, but I think Bud is a, a, he's definitely a quality NBA coach, but he's better suited for younger teams or teams that haven't got to the playoffs yet because he's able to guide you and get you to the playoffs. But when you get to the playoffs and teams get to look at tape and, and adjust to what you're doing game on game basis, 
and that's not your forte, that's when he gets exposed. Bud doesn't, he gets exposed in the regular season, but it gets covered up because of so many games and you play a lot of bottom feeders. So the, the records and things and the way they play as far as this three point ball, it can work in the regular season. In the playoffs, it's a whole different animal. In the playoffs, in the NBA, you have to think your way through the game. You have to think your way through the game as a coach. As you see things, you need to be able to adjust. Like what, what, like what make Floyd Mayweather one of the greatest boxers of all time? He's always adjusting as things are happening in the rig. They always say he's gathering data. He's like a server. He's gathering data. And then once he gathers enough data, he starts to execute and make changes. That's the type of coach that I want. That's like a server that's able to retain data, comprehend it, and then make changes and execute. That's what the Bucks need. We're at that level. Well, when we're in the playoffs, we're not going against chumps. We're going against quality teams with quality coaches. And our weakest link can't be your coach. Your weakest link on your team shouldn't be your coach. And respectfully, the weakest link on the Bucks is our coach. It is. Like I said, we don't need to fire him today, tomorrow. Let the, let let things settle down for a minute. And like I said, after the NBA playoffs, let, let let's sever ties. Let's just sever ties. I, I I don't know what can be different from this year to next year with Bud. He's been this. He's he's the same. He's the same old Bud. Like genuine, I'm the same old G. He's the same old Bud. Nothing is gonna change. So if if he's not gonna change, we have to force change, and that's what the Bucks need to do. Again, no disrespect. I'm just I I'm just saying, y'all. My boy Tony Jackson in the in the chat. The playoffs don't seem right without the button. No, it doesn't, bro. It's not at all, man. It it feel crazy. We, it's still something to deal with. It, I, I still, yeah, it's a it's a lot to deal with. And that point alone is leaning towards why is Bud the coach? Like I said, just gotta pick the right time. But that lets you know this shouldn't be hitting this hard with fans. If you, if you didn't have high expectations and you were let down and you can almost pinpoint the who let you down, it's, it's very difficult to, squ uh, to swallow, y'all. Pass them in. Our options are Nurse, Lee, and Kenny. Kenny has no uh, long postseason run. Lee, the guys, no, but will he, will he be just Bud 2.0? Nurse, by far, the best option would be get Fred with him. That is something to talk about later. Fred Van Fleet will be a free agent. But Fred Fran Vliet, uh, Fred Van Fleet is also a smaller uh, smaller guard, bro. He's definitely a smaller guard. Let me see my my chat up. Get at a minute to, to percolate. That's the thing, though. I like Van Fleet, but he's definitely a smaller guard. So I don't I don't know how uh, what effect that will have, but he's definitely a smaller guard. So you got to take that in consideration. But I like Van Fleet. I like Van Fleet, though. I do like Van Fleet. Trav 414 in the chat was good. Uh, I'm still salty about my bugs, but I know we'll be back. We'll be back, but with who, who as, as our coach, sir? That's the number one question. Who as our coach? Hey, Cynthia. She said, what up, Amber? What up, Cynthia? What's good? What's good? We just chopping it up about Bud. Here, Cynthia come. Cynthia just get right to it. Bud has to go uh, roster overhaul. Yes, man. Yes, man. See, I had to, I had to change all my overlays. I got to get that fixed. Okay. Forget about Bud got to go. What up, my boy? We talking change. <laughs> Yeah, it's time for a change, bro. It's time for a change. Ali Benjamin. Shout out to my boy, Ali Benjamin. Cynthia, yes, ma'am. Hit that like button, y'all. It's free. It don't cost you nothing. Just hit that like that like button. My boy, Select Sense in here. What up, what up? North side, stand up. Yes, sir. You already know what it is. North Division. 10th Street. <laughs> you know what it is. Shout out to my boy, Select Sense. Cynthia Harris said, Jalen Brown, not too happy. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Nate McMillan or Kevin McHale could be a couple of options as a coach. Wow. I didn't even think about Kevin McHale. Nate McMillan is solid. I like Nate McMillan. Kevin McHale would be interesting. He's very knowledgeable. And I think he has an extremely high basketball IQ. 
Kevin McHale would be a very interesting pick. And he's a big man, so he might be able to work with Giannis too. Hmm. Kevin McHale, interesting. Dark Kent, shout out to you. What up, Big Kent87? Yo, what I miss? We just chopping it up about Bud, bro. What we need to do. Do we need to move on from Bud or not? Shout out for the super chat from P. I'll get to you in a minute, bro. Let me get to the super chat here real quick, y'all. Shout out to the super chat from P. Who would you hire if you were the GM? Like I said, uh, P, I would get to a Nick Nurse. But, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> Kevin McHale's interesting now. That's really interesting, Kevin McHale, y'all. That's extremely interesting. And Nate McMillan. Those are definitely options. I was just dead. I had tunnel vision on Nick Nurse. But Nate McMillan and Kevin McHale are very interesting options. Let me get through the chats. A lot of y'all in here. Mr. Troll said no. No for what, Mr. Troll? It said Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, Ali Benjamin said Tyrese Halliburton or Turner would be a good trade. I like Turner. I like Miles Turner, but I don't know if he want to come here. He seemed like he want to go to uh, the Lakers. Tony Jackson said, got a clear head now. Give him one, one more year because Giannis wants him there. Did Giannis tell you that, bro? I don't know if Giannis want him there. I don't know if that's true, but uh, if that is, that Giannis is crazy. <laughs> Select Sid says, you're the real YouTuber now. He got the lights, gang, gang. Come on, bro. <laughs> it's not fully set up yet. This is just the, the you know what I'm saying, the appetizer. I ain't put the, the uh, Sazon or Adobo yet. I, the, the, the Adobo and Sazon is coming. Just give me a little bit. We still finishing up down here, bro, but it's getting there. Shout out to Daniel Orton. I don't know who's going to be the new, uh, the new coach if they fire, but they got to get him out of here, though, bro. They got to get him out of here. They got to get him out of here. No doubt. They have to get him out of here, I think. That's just my personal opinion. They got to get him out of here. Damn, that's a lot of y'all in here. Hold on. I'm trying to get through the chat, y'all. Just bear with me. We need to get Dame time, William Johnson. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I want Dame time too, but what are we going to have to give up for Dame time, bro? That's the question. What do we need to give up for Dame time? My boy Buck City TV. It's been hard for me to forget how Bud let Jimmy just destroy us through the series. See, that's the... Mm. That is kind of like such a damning thing that happened. Like, we got to be real and honest, y'all. We saw one player beat us, and our coach did nothing to stop it, y'all. We got to be honest. We got to be real. Jimmy Butler was dominant in this series. He destroyed us, and we did nothing to get the ball out of his hands, to give him different looks, to put Giannis on him. We did nothing to, to, to get him out of his rhythm. Jimmy Butler was in a rhythm this whole series. All we had to do is at least throw a couple double teams just to see what would happen. We didn't even make an effort to stop Jimmy. It was like, I don't want to say spit in our face, but it was like spitting in the fans' face. We're all watching this man destroy us, and we're watching nobody do nothing. You see it? Drew is a great defender, but Jimmy got dog in him, and he's a big body, and he's tough. For, for Drew to be undersized, and then we're expecting him to, ha to have offense too, that was a lot to ask from Drew. Why not switch up uh, Jimmy Butler's defenders? Why not double Jimmy and see what happens? That's where I, that's where I can't defend Bud, y'all. I can't defend that. Can y'all defend that? I can't defend that. We got to keep it. We got to keep it real. We got to keep it real. Seriously. We we can't. My boy Select Sense said, get the likes up. Yes, sir. Please hit the like button. Four times two. Yo, yo. What up, bro? What's good? Good to see you in the chat. 
Born 2 said, we just in such a tough money situation, man. When it comes to getting new and younger players around Giannis, we need a new coach and Chris to opt out because he is he has all the leverage. Yeah, that's the thing, too. We got to consider if Chris opt back in. But if he opts back in, it's not the worst case scenario either because we could use him like a team will accept him as a trade for uh, the for the dead contract because after, after the year, they would have $40 million off of the books. So Chris... Even though he could opt in, he's still a very tradable asset to a team that has enough uh, cap space because a team would just take his contract like, damn, when we get him off the books, we can go get a, a real superstar for that $40 million. So it's not a bad thing if he opts in or opts out. Either way, I think it's good for the Bucks. I just hope that we have the opportunity to trade him and don't lose him for nothing. But I do think if we were to lose him, that I do think we would get another superstar that would want to play with Giannis. How do y'all feel about that? Do you guys feel like other players want to play with Giannis like they do with LeBron? Do you feel like, okay, let's say, let's just say Middleton opted out and somebody gave uh, Middleton a max contract. So we had that void at that 40 million, right? Do you guys think the players would want to come play with the Bucks? You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, do y'all think so? I guess that's a question, too, to think. Because he could opt out. Somebody could max him out. You never know. Oliver Story, look, look look at all these young players and coaches in the playoff. Yep. Look at all these young coaches in the playoffs. Yes, sir. Oliver Story. We we just need to go in a different direction. My boy, 78, man. Hope all is well. Shout out to my boy, 78, man. Appreciate the $10 super chat. We just talking about Bud, bro. And if we need to get rid of Bud, we not talk diving too much and nothing else. We just talking about Bud today, uh, 78, because that is a key cog in all this. We do know Middleton has that leverage, but it, I don't think it hurts us either way. I just wonder if, if uh, somebody want to sign with the Bucks. Daniel Orton said Giannis mad he didn't cover Jimmy. That's what I heard, too. I heard he feels a way about that, too. Let me get to my man Super Chat here. Shout out to 78. Thanks for the $10 Super Chat. Salute, bro. Bud takes pride in not making adjustments. We should have at least two rings by now. We should promote Charles Lee. We could do that, too. I'm not mad at that, either. But I don't want Charles Lee to be a baby Bud. That's my fear, 78. Is he a baby Bud? You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, yeah. I don't I don't, I don't know if he's a baby Bud or not, bro. That That's the problem. Y'all bear with me one minute. I'm just trying to uh, send this live out to somebody who's asking for it. I still like Bud as a as a coach. If you have the right team, if you have the right type of team with Bud, you could be straight. But uh, like I said, a young team is perfect for Bud, but not no veteran team trying to win championships. Bud ain't it. Bud ain't it. Man, y'all snapping in here. Hold on a sec. Let me get through a, a few more people. My boy 7Z in the chat, no dang. We need Jalen Brown, two birds with one stone. We add Jalen and take him away from the Celtics. That would be outstanding, 7Z. If we could get Jalen Brown, Jalen Brown is better than uh, Tatum. That might not be popular, but if you watch basketball, Jalen Brown is better than Tatum. I stand on that. I would love to have Jalen Brown. It would be a devastating one-two punch if we got Jalen Brown. Oh, The boy Ken, uh, what up, Big Ken? Okay, you on your tablet. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. Always appreciate you in the chat, sir. Oh, Pam in the chat. What up, Pam? Good to see you in the chat, Pam. What's good? You going to stir the pot today, Pam? What you going to do today, Pam? You stir the pot? William Johnson said these losses was on Chris Drew. Sorry to say it, Giannis. Yeah, it was, but they weren't, they weren't the people that were preventing the double team on Jimmy. The double, we got to, oh, they play bad, but if we slow down Jimmy, none of, how they play don't matter. All we had to do was slow. They had one player on offense that was devastating for the Miami Heat, and we did nothing to stop that player. We played five games, y'all. We didn't adjust one game to what Jimmy was doing. He did whatever he wanted to. That's inexcusable. Inexcusable. Patricia P in the house. Hey, Patricia, what's good? 
Zelos Newton, what's good, bro? When Bud took Giannis and Middleton out at the same time, then the crowd started booing, booing him. That said everything. <laughs> Bud is wild, bro. Bud's lineups. I feel like Bud almost is trolling with his coaching. If that's, I know that sounds unbelievable. It's almost like he's trolling with his coaching sometimes. It, I, I just don't understand. Tim Jones was good. We really just need to get younger. It's the main reason why the Warriors are still winning. Their front office was smart enough to see the core getting older, so they got some young uh, uh, running gunners. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. We got to get younger. We got too many old cats. Like I said, we this is a fire sale for the Bucks. if you ask me. We can get rid of a lot of people. We can get rid of 80% of the roster, and I have no, I won't shed a tear. We can get rid of 80% of this roster and do a complete re uh, revamp, and I'm okay with it. We've done. We've won a championship with the roster we had. We've been regressing ever since. It's time to overhaul from the inside out, coach, then player, because I want the coach to have his players. So coach gone, new coach, new players in that order. It can't be one before the other. That's my opinion, y'all. Y'all snapping in here. Pam said uh, Rockets want Middleton or Harden or both. They want to... They want to package Jay Green for one of them. Would y'all take some of the young players from the uh, Rockets? Would y'all take uh, uh, who would y'all take from the Rockets for Middleton? That's interesting. That's very interesting. Patricia P said, "I I think big name players shy away from Milwaukee due to being a small market. That's what I'm saying. So we between a rock and a hard place. So if we get rid of Middleton." and he opts out and somebody maxes him out, I feel like it'd be hard for us to replace Middleton or Middleton's uh, type player because I don't know if people want to come to a small market team. That could be an issue. That's why I'd rather be a sign and trade. That would I think that'd be the best option for us to get rid of Middleton as a sign and trade. But again, I don't want anybody moving until we get our coaching situation straight. Uh, that's it, Pam. That is it. Giannis masks a lot of Bud's mistakes. Absolutely. He masks all his mistakes. That's a, that is a fact. Pam, you get a lot of cosigns in the chat. Shout out. Zelos Newton, you said Parker. What you talking about? Parker who? Oh, Parker Smith. Okay. Okay. Daniel Orton said, give us green. Okay. I, I like Jalen Green. He's a nice young player. Kenny Max said, I really want LaMelo Ball, but, but dude, stay hurt. LaMelo Ball? LaMelo Ball at point would be interesting. That would be very interesting, actually. Huh. That would be extremely interesting. My boy Max said, what up, bro? What up, Max? I think I know that it's been a tough week for Bud. It's been a, a tough couple weeks for Bucks fans. But I think to move forward in the heel, we, we have to get a new coach. We got to get new players. This same team ain't going to get it done. If we come into next season with this same roster, we're going to get put out first or second round again because it, we're probably going to have the same coach. So how can we expect different results? If you don't change the variables, you can. Ex how do you change the results? We're getting older. We're not getting younger. So we we have we had a window with this team. So now I think that we need to revamp, retool, regroup. Get we just need to start over kinda. And just build around Bobby, Bochamp, Giannis. And I and I say Drew too to an extent and Lopez. But to be honest, I'm a I'll trade Drew for the right price. I'll trade Drew for the right price. I'm going to keep it real. I'll trade Drew for the right price. Passamendo said Jalen Green or Alpin Sengun. I'm not too familiar with the Alpin Sengun dude, but uh, it can't be worse than what we got now. Somebody says, let's see here. What's next? Max said, Amber, we can't afford to play around. We had a five-year window with this team and only won uh, one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, we've, we've had the best record of the NBA multiple times over uh, over Coach Bud's career. And for what? 
For what? To win one championship? We damn near like the Packers out here. For real. I don't know what happened to my little chat window. I got to get that fixed here, y'all, in a minute. Give me a second. Let me let that chill here for a minute. I have to get that working. I don't know what happened to my little chat window. We'll get it cracking, though. <laughs> Patricia! <laughs> Patricia said, we'll take email Doka from the Rockets. Man, fast. Fast. Jimmy John's fast. That's how fast I would take Emi Doka from uh, the Rockets. Jimmy John's freaky fast. I would take, it, take him uh, from... Uh, the Rockets. But there's good coaches out there, y'all. So we just got to know what the Bucks is going to do. Pamela said, if the team had a true point guard, it would eliminate a lot of turnovers and run a smoother offense. They don't run any sets. I didn't see much pick and roll or drawn up plays by Bud in his Heat series. Nope. Didn't see one. All I saw was, get out there and play, guys. That's what I saw out there. I keep telling y'all, y'all think I be trying to be funny. I used to hoop for real. They run, we're, they're running AAU offense out there. That's nothing. What, what the Bucks do is nothing advanced, y'all. It's not an advanced offense. The defense at a time was uh, futuristic, but, you, but you've been doing it five, six years. It's no longer futuristic. Everyone's figured it out and adapted. That's the thing. Everybody's adapted to the Bucks, and we haven't adapted to, to the league. That's just what it is. We haven't adapted again. Giannis about to hit 30 soon, man. We got to uh, turn the roster on. Exactly. 7Z said, oh, Michael Porter Jr. can only shoot no defense. True. But he also, like somebody said, he's injury prone, too. I, I do agree with that. Oh, Kenny Mack said that. Uh, Dark Kent, MP MPJ, stay hurt, too. Yeah, I want to say Michael Porter Jr. do stay hurt. He, he, he does stay hurt. But like I said, y'all, we shouldn't be talking about any players until we know who the coach of the Bucks is going to be. That's what's most important to the roster. We can't start putting pieces together if we don't know who the coach is. Because if you have a running gun coach, you're going to need different players versus if you have a kind of like a bug coach who just want to run half court and shoot up threes and not really push the pace. Because if we're pushing the pace, we're going to need a different type of team, y'all. We got to keep it real. We're going to have to overhaul like 90% of the roster to get younger and faster. This isn't a team that can run up-tempo. You know what? I haven't heard anybody say Dan Tony. You guys wouldn't, wouldn't accept Dan Tony if he had a defensive-minded assistant coach? What would y'all think about uh, Dan Tony? Running up and down. He shoots threes, too, but it's, it's just more within reason. He makes adjustments. What do y'all say about uh, Dan Tony? Uh-oh, here come Pam. I would offer Tyron Lue a lot of money to pull him from the Clippers. He hasn't uh, been let down by his stars for a few... He's been let down uh, by his stars for a few years now and is hungry for a championship. He might just take it. I think he would. I think he would. I think he would. I don't think he would turn away from uh, coaching the Bucks. Not at all. I think that'd be right up his alley. Milwaukee Black, what up? We got to go younger. Four or five times uh, want Middleton uh, to... TG. Shout out to Milwaukee Black. Everything have to change if they hire him. Yeah, I agree. Everything will have to change, but we need change anyway, Daniel. That's the whole point. We need change, bro. We need change. That's the point. Yeah, can he run up tempo, but that's that I think that's the way we need to go is up tempo. You got Giannis that can get from one end of the court to the other in, in, in 10 steps. Why wouldn't you want to run and gun? We've tried it this half court way. Let's try it the other way. What's the worst that can happen? We get put out in the first round again? Let's just try it and see what happens. Max said this year Bud did an excellent job with managing Giannis's minutes. He does. He usually is pretty good at managing minutes. The problem is, is when he takes people out and put them in is the problem with Bud.
Lee Bruce said, hey, does anyone remember Horace taking DiVincenzo about 15 picks ahead of his teammate Jalen Brunson in the 2018 draft? That was fun. What? I forgot all of... Why would you bring that up, Lee Bruce? I forgot all about that. Ah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Max said, Bud was trash managing everyone else's minutes. Facts. Facts. Oh, I didn't even see my boy Green Ranger made it in here. Green Ranger was good. I like Nick Nurse. He doesn't love manage. We need to get away from uh, that nonsense. Maybe we do. Maybe we do need to stop low managing. It didn't seem to help us, did it? Giannis still got hurt in the playoffs, so it just is what it is. Jordan was playing 82 games a year, so I don't want to hear this low management to keep it real. That's some I almost got out of character. That low management is soft. I'll just say that. It it the players back in the eighties and nineties was playing eighty two games. These dudes got way more technology, nutrients, uh alkaline water, all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Th they should be able to play eighty two games. Pam said we need an offense like the Warriors, something exciting and not boring like the crap the Bucks put on the floor. Absolutely. But that's what I'm saying. Why not Dan Tony? Sorry, four or five teams are looking at Middleton, including the Rockets. Okay, cool. Let them look. Let's do a sign and trade. Let's make it work. Dan Tony, we would need young, fast players. We, we just don't have the assets to get young in just a season. We'll see. Shout out to a new subscriber. Shout out to Paul Walker. Shout out to you, bro. Appreciate you subscribing. Join the Bucks Nation. Welcome, welcome. 7Z said Becky Hammond, the next Bucks head coach. I'm not sexist here, sir. Whoever can get us to a championship, I don't care. If it's a woman, dude, whatever, get us a championship. We need some more banners and five serve form. Do y'all know, like, <laughs> I cashed out on my uh, <laughs> playoff tickets. I just knew. <laughs> I'm still mad, y'all. I cashed out on the whole playoffs. Because I thought, I knew for sure we was going to be in the finals. I didn't even have a doubt in my mind that we were going to be in the finals. I, here, take this money. Give me my tickets. I already know we're going to go to the finals. It don't even matter. <laughs> this is one of the refunds I'm mad that I had to get. This is a refund I didn't think I was going to get. Damn, Bucks. Mm. Dark Kent said, Scott Brooks is head coach candidate. Ugh, I don't know for a championship quality team. I I think he's kind of boot hoser tier where he can get you to the playoffs but can't get you to the promised land unless uh, everything goes perfect. Patricia P says, since we throw in our head coaching names, how about former uh, Milwaukee Bucks Sam Cassell? Mm. Ooh, Patricia. That's heavy. I wouldn't mind Sam because I'm I'm cool with that. I support that, Patricia. I'm cool with Sam because you know what? Put him on the list. Put Sam Cassell on the list. Yes, yes, ma'am. Sam Cassell. Yep. I'm cool with that. Yep. Jimmy Roller said, I uh, honestly think if we get any other coach and make a couple of good trades, we can win the next two out of three championships. Need some younger, more athletic players. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. We're right there. We just need to tweak the roster. We just need to tweak it and get the, the right voice. We just, we just need a coach that can make adjustments, y'all. That's it at the end of the day. We just need a coach that can make adjustments. Simple. Very simple. A coach that can make adjustments, and we would be in a whole different space. Green Ranger said, I like Dan Tony. He's a really good coach. Our offense needs a drastic change. I think it could work wonders for someone like... That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Depending on our personnel, we can't... That's why I'm saying the coach is the most important part of where we're going next. As far as personnel, we can't just say we want so-and-so. So-and-so might not work in this specific coach's scheme. We have to get the players that fit our coach's scheme. 
that's why we we can't really talk about players until we know what's up with the coaches. That's why I know we probably won't hear anything until after, like I said, the, the NBA playoffs are, are done. But we for this team and this city to heal, we gotta get we gotta get Bud out of here. We need to see someone held responsible for what happened this year. And if anyone should be held responsible or should want to be held responsible, it should be the coach. That's just how I feel. You can't just expect us to take this like that. Us having the best record in the NBA and getting put out the first round and just like, okay, we'll we'll come back better next year, guys. Don't even worry. We'll be back. No, 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 no. We're not doing that, sir. We're not doing that, Mr. Horse, sir. We want change. We want we want someone held responsible for what happened this year. Sorry is not going to cut it. We'll be better next year is not going to cut it. We need to see visible change. This is two years in a row the Bucks have underachieved. Regardless of circumstances, regardless of injuries, we underachieved. Hey, we just lost to a team that had their second best player out and their best uh, bench player out. They didn't cry or whine or make excuses. They kicked our butt, didn't they? So it ain't no excuses. We've underachieved the last two seasons and have had great records the last two seasons and have underachieved. Someone needs to be held responsible. We will not take this a third time in a row. Bucks Nation will not accept it. We will not accept this current roster as it is. We will not accept this current coaching staff as it is. We need to see change for us to believe in what y'all doing. Period. Man, if, if uh, Horse and them don't get it together, get focused, Dan, but Dan Tony team system don't play defense. Let's be real. Do we play defense for real? Look, let's talk about that because everybody, all the Bucks defense. You're looking at the stats, but do the Bucks actually play good defense, or do we get lucky? We leave a lot of people open for a lot of easy shots, open threes, uh, top of the key shots. It's just if they make it or miss it. So if they're missing, it makes our defense. It embellishes how good our defense really is. Is our defense really good, y'all? Like, seriously, is it really good? Or do we get lucky that teams just have off shooting nights? Something to think about. Something to think about. Is our defense really as good as the stats say they are? Woo, 7Z came with the smoke. He said fire John Horse. I'm not mad at that. Oh, my battery about to die, y'all. How let me see how many minutes I got on here. I got a couple still. I'm good. Yeah, uh, all right, hey, do y'all want John Horsefire too? Y'all want John Horsefire? Seven Z said the Bucks try to play defense. Dan Tony teams don't even attempt. But don't you think over time that Dan Tony would adjust? He might. So say he got the job. Don't you think he would adjust? To playing like playing defense at this point, I would think so. That's just my opinion, though. I would think so. Y'all don't think so? I think Dan Tony is not an idiot. I think he knows that he has to play some form of defense. That's why I said he would have to hire some form of like defensive minded uh coach. But man, y'all said that Sam Cassell thing is interesting. I would not mind Sam Cassell actually. Uh, Riddick Sharma said, Nick Nurse. We love Nick Nurse on here, sir. The youth. Absolutely. Passamendo. Who got one more year? You said he got one more year. Who got one more year, Passamendo? Uh, tell me in the chat, bro. Kevin Price. Hire Ray Allen to the buck shooting coach. Fire, bud. Hire Nick Nurse. Ray Allen is a shooting coach. Is interesting. Why not? I'm cool with that. We all want Nick Nurse or uh, Nick Nurse quality uh, coach, uh, Kevin Price. Shout out to you. Pastor Minder said, if he fails again, yes, bye bye. Oh, nah, nah, nah. One more. We don't have time to waste, Pastor Minder. That's the thing. We One more year. We wasted two years, sir. We got put out in the second round last year, the first round this year. That's regression. No, 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 no. We don't got no more time to waste. Oh, Jimmy Roller. J Joe Ingles and Grayson Allen. 
Throw Pat Connaughton in there. Food on defense. And you know who else we need to talk about defensively too? Hey, uh, as much as we love Bobby Porter's, Bobby Porter's defense is suspect. Extremely suspect, Bobby Porter's defense. Y'all, y'all, if y'all watch Bobby Porter's defense is suspect too. Put him on that list too. Dark Kent said, I just think we uh don't have the right starting personnel when it comes to defense. And uh Little Ten Con Man kind of said it grace and hilarious. Shout out to Dark Kit. Underground Hub was good. I think the defense is good, but we got to put the best defender on their best offensive player. Do you think we defend the paint well or defend threes well, Underground Hub? Because I think we defend the, the, the three terribly. And I think we let too many people get deep in the paint. I think we defend the, the three terrible. I also think, watch how deep line, uh, Lopez sinks into the paint. It lets people get runners and jumpers all day. You see how comfortable Bam was getting pulling up for that little uh free throw jumper or even a little closer for the runner that's what our defense allows you to do that's stupid why would you let someone run into the paint and get a, a running start and get in a rhythm shooting floaters now they're pulling up their jump now their eyes are getting big because the shots are starting to get in that's why we see people going off on us all the time for 30 and 40 consistently because our defense allows them to get in rhythm that's why it's unacceptable and i don't trust our defense nor do i like it Green Ranger said, agreed, our defense is suspect. We allow guys to get to certain spots on the floor and take open shots. Drop coverage sucks. Then we allow great players to play one-on-one, -on -one, which is a terrible idea. That This is exactly why we lost against the Rockets. That's exactly why we lost. That's exactly why we lost. Literally. Pam said, if John doesn't build a team around Giannis, then yeah, fire him too. I give him one more year to have uh, have him get it done. Okay, are you saying horse or horse in the combination with Bud, Pam? Feel handy, Amra. Feel handy. Okay. I got you, Max. Shout out to Max. Uh, Riddick Sharma said, I also wanted to see Crowder start over fraud Grayson Allen. Hey, you know what? Crowder looked like a fraud right now, too, Retake Sharma. Let's keep it real. That Crowder experiment failed epically. We could blame Bud for not playing it, but when he played, he looked old and slow. 7C said, Porter plays no D. He doesn't. His defense is suspect. I'm telling y'all. Milwaukee Black said, you're right, new coach ASAP. Let the new coach pick new players. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We gotta get. We have to get a new coach, y'all. Just think about this. We have a two-time MVP, right? We got put out the first round this year, the second round last year. And y'all want to give this man one more chance? Statistically, that wouldn't happen. That just wouldn't happen, y'all. You can't have two-time MVPs, defensive player of the year candidates, sixth man of the year candidates, and getting put out in the first round or getting put out in the second round. That's not that's not the, the caliber of coach that you want, respectfully. Like I said, now's not the time to get rid of Bud. I understand that. Uh, but after the NBA playoffs have concluded and we have a new NBA champion, we also need to acquire a new coach. You guys can't keep saying one more year. We just wasted two years of Giannis' uh, prime on foolishness. We gotta, we gotta do it, y'all. We we gotta, we gotta pull the plug. We gotta pull the plug. And and to be honest, maybe pull the plug on horse too. Now that y'all talking about it, if that's his boy, get rid of him too, cause he can't be trusted. How about that? Let's get rid of horse and bud because they both in cahoots. Get them both out of here. Let's start fresh. Let's start completely fresh. Let's get rid of the GM. Let's get rid of the coach. Let's turn over the 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 uh the players. Let's start fresh. I think the experiment is done now. This this Bud experiment is done now. It's done. He got his uh he won a chip. That's awesome. He solidified his career and legacy as a coach. Now it's time for him to move on and work for uh a, a younger team, like I said, like a Detroit Pistons or somebody like that, where he can with the young players, he he'd be better suited in that environment. Patricia P. said, if you guys remember at the beginning of the season, the Bucks were playing with some defensive intensity. 
they were even a uh, guardian threes didn't last long before they were i remember that i remember that patricia that was in the first couple games uh home games i was like, yes we were all excited and then it just evaporated i remember that patricia Dark Kent said, Bobby P don't play no D. I don't know about that. Hey, man, you better go look at the game tape, Dark Kent. I'm telling you, look at the game tape. Lee Bruce, Duncan Robinson stuck all season and shot threes around 32%, but nails around 80% versus Milwaukee. Yeah, you got to start. We got to hold somebody accountable, Lee Bruce. I'm going to add on to that, Lee Bruce. Uh, the the uh, Miami Heat have one of the worst offensive efficiencies in the NBA during the regular season. In the playoffs, they're number one. How did that happen? We got it. We got to call a spade a spade, y'all. Pam came in and said both. I'm starting to lean towards both. I came in here talking about Bud, but maybe we need to get rid of horse too. Let's get rid of horse too. Yeah, underground. Gabe Vincent cooked us. That was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Gabe Vincent, you are a person that should be getting 20 points over five or six games. Not in a game. We gotta cut the we gotta pull the plug, y'all. We gotta pull the plug on this. We gotta reboot. We we have to reboot. We need to run a firmware update on this team, and then a software update on this team, and then we need to reboot and get rid of all of that old data. We need to just start fresh. There's nothing wrong with starting over sometimes, y'all. We need to yeah, we need to start over. We just do. Turbo Duran said, uh, there you guys go, blaming the coach. Blame your players. Oh, so you came in talking spicy, sir. No, 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 no. We're not saying we're not blaming the, the players, sir. But the coach is the biggest part of the problem. The coach is who tells us how to guard people, sir. Did you not see how we were guarding Jimmy Butler? Do you not think a coach should have made an adjustment to what uh, Jimmy Butler was doing to us, sir? Or do we blame the players on the defensive scheme? We're They're doing what the coach tell them to do. The coach is telling them to play one-on-one -on -one with Jimmy. That's what they're doing. They're so, the players are soldiers. They're not generals. They're soldiers. The coach is the general. They follow the orders from the general. The general is an idiot. What do you think is going to pass along down to the team? Just being real. See, Kenny Mack, clean house. Yeah, let's get everybody out of there. Blow it up, see? See? Get them out. Get them all out of here. Real talk, look at our uh, last three playoff runs. We allowed Kevin Durant to play one-on-one, -on -one, then Tatum the following year. Now, nah, Jimmy, they all average 40 points a game. New defensive system is neat. Green Ranger, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Green Ranger. One more time. Three playoff runs, and this is all facts. Shout out. But, y'all, my battery about to die. Uh, I'll be live in a few more days, and we'll chop it up some more. But I don't want this to cut off on y'all. I'm Amra. This is Amra's Logic. This is Milwaukee Bucks Trades, Rumors, and News, live edition. We're talking about what's next for Mike Budenhoser and the Bucks. Comment, like, subscribe, share this electrifying content. Let's keep chopping it up in the comment section. Shout out to all the new viewers. Shout out to everybody on the live. I love Bucks Nation. We're going to keep this going. And like I said, we're going to keep talking about uh, the NBA playoffs moving forward. We're going to focus on the Lakers and uh, Golden State. And uh, in the East, we're going to talk about the Celtics and 76ers. Stay, stay tuned. I will be going live a lot more. Gone.